Hello guys, welcome to the first part of the video tutorial on how to count features in multiple GenBank files. This is a follow-up of the earlier video I made on how to count features in single GenBank files. And you can find that video by clicking the link right up there or checking it in the description box. The reason why this particular video is important is because there are times where you are going to have access to several GenBank files, such as this one. And there are times you even have hundreds and thousands of them. Okay, these are the GenBank files. And when you have such a situation, then you need to automate the process of counting them. And this is where Python comes in handy. And so with Python, you can quickly write codes and automate the process to count all of them and also organize them better. I will therefore demonstrate this automation process by following these activities here. We are going to download some GenBank files, put all of them in the same folder, and then count the features in each of these files with BioPython and then save the result for the individual files to their respective output files. And to help us do this, we will use the following libraries, BioPython and Pandas. These are all Python libraries and can be installed using the pip command. Okay, so you can install using these commands here. I also have a video that shows how to install Python libraries using pip and you can check that in the description box. Now that we are done with the introductions, let the practicals begin. We will first download our GenBank files, like what I have here. Okay. I will demonstrate how these files can be downloaded from the NCBI database, and I'm also going to leave their download links in the description box for you to check. Let me show you how it's done with one example. So this is the download page for one of the genomes we are going to use. Okay, this is Staff Orios string 521. Okay, so in order to download the GenBank files, we will go to this section here, send to. Then we check complete record. Then when you come to choose destination, you check file. When we come to the format, we select GenBank 4. Then we click on the create file button. You will then be asked to download. Okay, so I will save the file. Now, it gives you a default name but I'll change it because we have multiple files to download. Okay, so this one becomes Vin521 because that's the name of the screen. So I'll save it on my desktop. So that is done. So please follow these instructions for the four remaining GenBank files and get them all downloaded to a location of your choice. So after downloading them, we have all of them here. Mine is on the desktop, okay? So I'm going to place all of them in a single directory. I'll make it more organized. So I'll create a folder called sequences. And then put all of them there, okay? And I'm also going to take note of the path. We will use it on the Python terminal. So once you have your data downloaded, and you've also installed your Python libraries. We now begin the analysis. So first of all, we are going to import our libraries. These are the libraries we will use. Then we run it. We are now going to set a path 
to the directory that contains our GenBank files. So this is how I set my path. Okay, this is the file directory that contains your sequences. Please note that yours is likely to be different. So you make sure you put the appropriate one there. We then get the file names. So this is how I'll get the file names. I'm going to use the globe model here. So globes allow you to get access to file names that might even contain certain patterns of your choice. And so for this particular statement here, what I'm saying is that I want to get all the files in this directory. That's end with .gb. Notice that when we're downloading the files, it's had a .gb extension. So that is what I'm giving here so that I get the files. Okay. So once I get it, I can just query it. Okay, so these are the file names. If you wanted to know the length, if let's say you were dealing with several files, you could have just done a len here, say len j files, to get the number of files you are dealing with. Okay, or number of genomes. I'm dealing with five of them. You could also query for just one of them. Let's say the first member. Okay, and that will also be done for you. So now we are done with the getting of the file names. Let's proceed. Now, because we are dealing with multiple Zenbank files, we need to have a way of automating the codes. We are using a similar code, just as we did with the first video on how to calculate, how to find and count features in a single Zenbank file. Okay, so it's the same code that will be used, but we have to automate it so that it can run it on multiple GenBank files. And that's where Python comes in. So to help us do that, we need to first create a function. Okay, so the function will contain the codes that will be used to count the features. So let's do that first. I also have a video that shows you how to use functions for other computational work. So I'll leave that in the description box as well. So let's create the function. So to create a function, we start with a def statement, and then we give the function name. And then here, we also give a parameter, okay? So the parameter allows us to push in different files at different times, okay? So we begin with this one, and then we add the rest of the codes. So we create the function, and these are the codes that will be executed. Now, we begin by reading the Zenbank file that is supplied. Okay, that's why this parameter is there. Then reading takes place, and then the features are counted. And then the file is now saved to a directory. Okay, so we've set this base directory. That means this is where all the files will be saved, desktop. Okay, so because we have different files, their respective names will be used to save it. Okay, so features are counted, placed in a data frame by pandas, and then it is saved to an output file. So that is what this function um, is doing. Okay, full explanation of this code is found in the previous video, and you can watch that as well. So now we run this function. Now, function by default, after creating, cannot execute unless you call them. Okay, so what we have to do is now call the function and then apply it on all our files. The files are here, in this particular gene files here. Okay, that's what we do. But because we have multiple files, we need to use iteration. And that is where the for loops come in. Okay, so we use the for loop to iterate over each of those files 
and then push them here and then the counting will be done. I also already did that shows you how to use the for loops to iterate and then perform analysis on several sequences. So you can watch that as well. Link is in the description box. So let's add that for loop here. So we have for gene file and gene file count features. So for each of the files here, call the function, put the file name there, and then the activity will proceed. So let's run it. Notice I also have this print statement here so that we're able to track what is happening. That's why I place it there. Or sometimes when we are running some codes, we want to be able to see what is happening, track it, and if there are issues, you get it and resolve it. So we have this print statement here as one means of doing that. So now let's run it. Great, so now we have all the features being counted for us and being saved. There's also a notification here that the count data has been saved. Now we set this as a base directory. So this is where all those feature counts will be saved. So now let's go to the desktop and then check. And before I even go, let me also say that you can specify whatever directory you want there and then use that as well. Okay, so let's check it out. So this is my desktop and these are the output files. Okay, so let's just open one of them here. So we have it there, these are its features, and then the counts. You can also check, these are the features here as well. Okay, but notice the difference. There were some features here that were absent here. Okay, you can open this, this, and this as well. Okay, so we have all those counts there. But then, what happens is it becomes difficult to compare the genomes by themselves because we have saved all their counts in different files. Okay, so that'll be the point of the next video. So in the next video, we are still going to do the counting, but this time we are going to merge all the files, all the results into a single CSV file so that we can easily compare them at a glance. And so I will say thanks for watching and then expect the new video and then have a nice coding day. Goodbye.